Hi y'all, welcome to our first lesson on financial management and sport. This is module one. We'll be dealing with the basic principles of sport finance. In this module, we will be covering material from chapters two through three. We're gonna begin our lecture with some key definitions that ultimately we will use throughout the entire semester. Revenues, money coming into an entity. We see this in many aspects of business. One of our key issues for any business, and in our instance, the business of sport, is this notion if revenues decline. We have to recognize that if they do decline, we have to find new sources or ultimately reduce our expenses. And then we move to our other piece, spent expenses. Essentially, they are incurred cost by the entity. It can be any entity. You and I incur expenses every day from insurance to gas to rent and so on. And we can see that one of the greatest challenges we'll find in sport and for sport managers is ultimately balancing our revenues and expenses. Again, you and I deal with this every day. It's ultimately the bottom line of our checkbook. One of the things we can recognize though, as in sport and in other areas of life, expenses tend to be more predictable and therefore we can more closely monitor them. While this list is not all encompassing, it does give us some ideas of typical sources of revenue across sport, as well as some of those typical sources of expenses. So what are our traditional sources of revenue? Obviously things such as tickets, concessions, merchandise, especially in professional sport, we see sponsorships, and TV and broadcasting deals. We'll also see those in collegiate sport. Some of our non-traditional sources are sources that we have seen evolve over the last decade. Student fees, particularly to pay for collegiate sport, as well as student fees to help pay for high school or school sport. Selling players, um, and lastly, as High school sport has become increasingly popular. We are starting to see high school sport being licensed in a similar fashion that we see with collegiate sport. So what are key sources of expenses? Traditional expenditures we'll find in such things as travel, equipment and salaries, facilities. In addition, there's been some non-traditional expenditures we've seen lately, natural disasters, that result in loss of facilities, even additional travel, and then litigation. Um, institutions, companies, professional sports being sued, um, and ultimately the ability to protect themselves has resulted in a number of expenses. Now that we have our basic concepts about revenues and expenses, we are going to move on to some other basic concepts regarding accounting. I recognize that some of you have um, had accounting and have a bit of accounting background. For those of us that have not had accounting or do not have a background in accounting ideas, this is just a couple quick uh, basic concepts and overview so that we can understand some of the key principles going forward. Accounting, and we all have this, we have accounting departments. We even ourselves, we may argue that we are the personal accountants of our own finances. This is that idea accountants are responsible for understanding and processing except essentially what goes in and what goes out. The purpose in doing this, basic accounting purposes are so that we can make decisions about our resources, maintain and report all of our resources. Some of this um, ultimately is for government purposes and tax purposes. So we really want to think about accounting and accountants as the reporters. If we move to our other side of the slide, our managerial accounting, well, I want us to think about these as our accounting analysts. These are the individuals or this is the concept that we develop forecasts and budgets and potentially even models by utilizing and analyzing 
our accounting, i.e. our revenues and expenses. Again, this is not an all-encompassing um, idea of accounting and managerial accounting, um, but I want us to make sure we have a little bit of background so we can understand some of these pieces going forward. Keeping with our basic accounting concepts, uh, this slide introduces um, our basic T system. This is a term you're going to see often in finance and in sport finance. Again, some of you have been introduced to this and have vast knowledge of this concept, but I want to provide just an overview. A T system is essentially where, as you can see on the bottom right slide, where it appears to be a T. Our debits or our expenses are listed on that left hand side. Um, our credits or even our equity are listed on our right hand side. One of the things that I think helps me understand this is thinking about many, many, many years ago, my parents sitting down and balancing their checkbook, putting in their debits or their expenditures, expenses, and then also their credits, things where their equity, their income coming in, potentially um, ownership, of property and vehicles or whatever that appears. I can remember literally pencil, paper, and a lot of erasing of making, sitting down and creating this for themselves. This is what essentially businesses do in the world of sport, obviously in many businesses. But for our principles, I want us to recognize this line by line concept of actually getting in our expenses and our debits, those things going out, and our credits, those things coming in. Later, we're going to work on exactly what are our liabilities and what are our potential um, equities and ways that we can uh, decrease some of our liabilities, increase some of our equities, especially as they apply to sport. For our next basic finance principle, we're going to consider economics versus financial analysis. As the slide indicates, economics is the study of social, governmental, and f other factors that can influence the financial state of the industry. So how does a financial analysis fall into this? A financial analyst might consider what would happen if, and this is a sport application, if we raise ticket prices $1 in a given year and a financial analyst would indicate or would be able to determine that we might be able to generate an additional, as this slide indicates, $800,000 in revenue. Economists, on the other hand, consider how, as, as the definition indicated, what influence such a price increase would have on social, governmental, and other various factors. That is, an economist would be concerned with raising the ticket price $1. Would that increase ultimately discourage fans in the future from buying tickets and potentially ultimately reduce future income? Throughout the lectures, there will be a few slides that indicate questions for thought. The purpose of these is so that you can recognize application points as well as these questions for thought will help prepare you for upcoming exams. Use these as tools um, to check your knowledge as well as your preparation um, going forward. Now that we have some basic concepts down, the remaining slides in this lecture will deal with applying those concepts specifically in areas of planning. As indicated in this slide, budgeting is one of the key things we will encounter as sport managers. It is simply a, excuse me, a roadmap that shows where we ought to spend our money. On the right hand slide, it gives us an indication of a practical example on how we might budget for a softball team in a postseason conference tournament. When budgeting and planning, sources of data come from two areas, internal and external. Internal data is that which is generated by 
the company itself. External data is all of that outside or secondary data. Let's consider internal data a little more closely. As we said in the previous slide, internal data is that information that which comes from the company or business itself. Uh, a number of things can be included in this internal data. It runs from those accounting sheets, including balance sheets, income statements, any audits, financial analysis, or research the internal company has done it itself. Why is this useful? It ultimately allows the business or company to break down its operations into basic elements in order that they have the key information to create an appropriate budget. Let's consider external data a little more in depth in this slide. Oftentimes external data are those things that a company is unable to control. It may be such things like the market standard or what's going on with the shape of the NCAA or a professional organization. Nonetheless, external data is often equally as important. It gives organizations the ability to help establish one criteria for success and failure and ultimately plan for the future. I've mentioned at several occasions now this notion of planning or financial planning. So what goes into this process? One, it's forecasting potential revenues and ultimately budgeting for future expenses. We'll talk more about this in depth going forward. The first step in financial planning is forecasting. This is where companies and sport organizations look to the future when undergoing financial planning. They do so by utilizing both quantitative and qualitative data. Forecasting or future planning can be thought of in two ways, short term and long term. Short term planning usually encompasses that less than two year range and long term planning is anything greater than two year range. Some key aspects in short term planning often surround the amount of uh, capital and cash flow that is immediate to the organization. Long-term planning can be much more difficult as there are far more variables. That planning can be based upon potential industry trends, a political climate, advancements. It may even be and consider the planning that will need for new facilities or changes within the leagues or structures. The second step in financial planning includes developing a pro forma budget or a budget. Oftentimes, in addition to the budget, there is a financial plan for the business. We'll talk about that in the upcoming slide. A pro forma budget considers past financial results and expected future financial results. So one of the ways we can take that information is include it with a financial plan. This slide breaks down a financial plan in five steps. First of all, step one considers uh, getting a system of those projected financial statements, those things that are necessary and will help the company analyze future operating costs and plans. Then it's important on step two to consider what funds will be needed for long-term plans. This is where forecasting and budgeting come together. Number three considers that very concept of forecasting. What funds will be available in long-term and how much of that fund will not only be generated internally within the organization or business as well as externally. Next in step four, maintain a system of control of how the funds are allocated and used. And lastly, in number five, consider the results and develop procedures for adjusting the plan if ultimately the forecasts are not met. The remaining slides in this lecture will continue to talk about a planning process. 
the slides going forward are going to discuss what it takes to write a business plan. Business plans are super important when considering getting a new business off the ground and discussing with potential investors on how your business um, could offer an investment opportunity. In the layout of the business plan, the summary comes first. However, when thinking about writing the summary, the summary should be written after all other sections are finished. Some of the concepts in the summary include, one, what the, was the purpose of your plan, your product or service, your marketing potential, and then potential highlights in your marketing plan, the skills provided by your management team, financial projections, funding, and even a exit strategy if the business does su not succeed. The remaining slides going forward are going to talk about various areas that will need to be included in the plan. For lecture purposes going forward, when we are talking about the business plan, our sample business is going to be an athletic apparel company. So in considering our athletic apparel company, our first section of our business plan is going to be the industry section. This considers the industry trends, any legal or regulatory concerns, and additionally, it essentially considers the competitive forces you might face in your athletic apparel company. Section number two is the company section. This talks about the history of your company. What are its goals? What's its mission statement? Um, it considers short-term and long-term strategies. It talks about ownership and stockholders and our board of directors. The next two sections of our plan consider special circumstances and the analysis of our product or service. Special circumstances is this concept or considers things such as uh, stock options if our company decides to go public. It also may consider contracts for key employees. So for example, we're going back to our uh, athletic apparel company and maybe we have a high profile athlete that has endorsed our athletic apparel. In that contract with our high profile athlete, there will be a non-compete discussion. That is our high profile high profile athlete will wear nothing but our product. The second concept here is the analysis of our product or service. This is where we differentiate our product and our service from something else. So going back to our athletic apparel company, is it possible that our new um, athletic apparel company has found an innovative way to help reduce sweat and or smell of athletic apparel after it's been worn repeatedly. This is where we should highlight that and talk about how our product is different from all the other products already in the market. The next two sections of our business plan consider the market and the marketing strategy. First, the market. Who is our target market? Who do we want our, to purchase our athletic apparel? Is it athletes? Is it recreational runners? Is it men? Is it women? Those are all the things that we will talk about in our market section. Next, in our market strategy section, this considers how we will focus on distributing or selling our product, our athletic apparel, to that designated market. Things to think about. If we've decided that our athletic apparel is going to focus on female basketball players, if that is the case, then how will we uh, sell or distribute our product to female basketball players? Will we market during WNBA games? Will we um, come team up with uh, high profile uh, female basketball players. That is how we will consider those areas under our marketing strategy. The next section of our business plan is the operations section. I like to think about this as the day to day of what it takes to get our athletic apparel out the door in stores in the hands of our customers. This considers planning for seasons, lines, 
It will also consider um, when and where products will be delivered and so on. The next section is the management and personnel section. For lack of better description, this is like our bio section. It talks about our key business personnel and then ultimately gives a brief biography of their past accomplishments and those attributes they bring to our athletic apparel company. We've come to our last three sections of our business plan. Financial projections starts off this slide. This considers where our investors, if we have investors, can make their money back and what potential profit our investors could realize. This is ultimately important when we're seeking backing from outside investors. Our capital sections is this discussion of what money it is going to take or what resources it will take to get our company off the ground. When will those funds be needed? Lastly is our miscellaneous section. This is where <clears throat> we're able to give our investors or uh, those considering our business plan a key picture of some of those things specific to our company. It could be relevant pictures of our product. It could be um, a discussion of how we will be producing our product and and so on. Now that we've gone through all of the steps of our business plan, this highlights 10 areas that dictate what is a successful business plan. I like to think about these 10 points as our rubric. It essentially is that piece at which we compare our business plan to to determine whether it makes the grade or not. This is going to sum up our first lecture. Here are some additional questions for thought, some things to get you thinking about and applying the terms that we've had specifically to areas of sport management.